Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a curved path or trail um, in perspective. And I, this is really the way that I draw. I don't um, usually use a ruler. I just kind of look at angles and I try to find the horizon line, which is definitely helpful. And then maybe a, a few vanishing points. Um, so this tutorial was a little bit different because um, this was a request from Lucky Hiker and uh, they wanted it to kind of be in the mountains. So I had to look in my Google Photos drive and try to find a path or a trail. And really quick, this is not, this is not, um, what is it, sponsored or in any way by Google Photos, but I just typed in path, you know, or trail, and it gave me like any picture I've ever taken with a path or a trail, it just pulled them up. So I definitely recommend getting Google Photos. If you don't have it, it is such a great way to organize your pictures. If you do wanna have some larger quality prints that you're making from them later, what I do is I just have a separate Google Drive that I pay for to have large files in. But for most of your images, the file size that it saves it in is great. I mean, you could print like an eight by 10 and it would be fine. So anyway, Google Photos, great. Um, so today we're going to be drawing a path. <laughs> Let's get back to the lesson. I just had to say that. And we're going to be drawing a path um, that is in Springdale, Utah. It's at the entrance of Zion National Park. And you can kind of see the park in the background, but this trail winds around in front of you. In front of, this is uh, just a walk I was on one day. I don't know what I was doing. And then there's like a hill to the left and this path continues up that hill. So there's two different parts where we're drawing it. And so anyway, I'll have the picture in um, the video as we're drawing it as well, so you can see what I'm referencing. And then we'll do like two or three quick sketches. And these aren't finished drawings by any means, they're just quick sketches showing like size and placements of things. This is what I would do before a painting on my canvas actually with my paintbrush. So let's get started. So this is the picture that I took and I'm kind of in the shadow and the sun's hitting these. But here's the path that I'm on, and then this path actually curves and starts to go up this hill that's right here. So this is the one that we're going to be drawing. So let's get ready. All you need is a piece of paper and a pencil for this. And I will put, um, I'll try to put a bigger picture of this right here. So I'm just gonna scoot over and I'll get a bigger picture because I didn't want to use all of my printer ink to print this. And let's get started. I'm just gonna um, grab my pencil and this is a great exercise after we've been drawing in perspective. I like this method a lot better than I like using rulers because in this method, we're just really looking at what we're drawing. So we want to, first of all, my paper is a lot bigger um, than this image. So I'm just going to kind of, I'm gonna draw like a little picture frame in here because it makes it easier for me when I'm drawing from a photograph to try to make my paper like this similar size. All right, so now I've just kind of drawn like a little picture plane, that's what I'm seeing. I'm gonna figure out where my horizon line is. So it's actually right in the middle of this landscape. So about right here. So this is like parallel to my eyes, all right? And we have this path, and what I like to do, especially if you're looking at a picture, if you're just standing out in the mountains, then you just need to use your hands, try to figure out what you're drawing. There's so much going on when you're outside. It's nice to have like a little viewfinder or even take a reference picture because the edges are pretty important. Now this path actually ends before I get to the horizon line. So I'm just gonna draw about where this path ends, about right here. I'm going to be drawing dark just so you can see my lines, but draw, um, draw light because this is just kind of a, a practice, right? So our path's coming like this and then it's curving and it's kind of coming off of the screen right here. So this is the left side of the path, I'll draw it darker. And then the right side of the path, of course it's smaller because it's further away from us. It's kind of curving around and it just goes right kind of into the middle of our paper. All right, so it's getting smaller as it's going away from us. This isn't like a road, so it's not like it doesn't have to be perfectly even. But now we need to draw some of these details of the landscape in just a little bit. So there's some bushes right here and they're actually kind of coming along the whole side of this landscape. Just this, there's a big bush right here, and then just some clumps of bushes behind it, and then there's gonna be some trees up in here. But I'm just kind of really scribbling in these um, different details. And then this path, it, it kind of got wide right here, I don't know why, but 
there's like a bush right here we can see and then some more bushes and then we just have a bunch of bushes down here all right so i'm just drawing kind of the top of these right here. scribble 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 there we go really simple there is going to be a tree but let's not draw those types of details in until we have more of this path because hopefully lucky hiker this is what you're talking about I mean, even, let's say this is a huge mountain right here and the path's kind of going up. It's going to just get smaller and depends kind of on the mountainside, right? But this, in this case, this path actually winds around to this point here and then you start heading up this hill. And this is actually in, in a town called Springdale, right outside of Zion National Park. So we can kind of see the park right here. So let's just draw this hill. It kind of starts a little bit to the left of the path and then it just comes up. It's not huge. It feels huge when you're walking up it, but there's just this hill right here. And let me make sure I'm drawing it dark enough so you can see it. And our path is coming up that hill, but it's coming from this side right here. So it's kind of coming up. And then the hill actually kind of flattens out a little bit where that path is. And then it comes down. Okay, I hope you can see that. I'll draw darker. When I sketch, I draw really lightly, but I want you to see what I'm drawing. So here is that path. All right, and it is definitely not, not that big. It's probably about half that size. And what we can really just see is the exposed dirt from this path that's making it, and it kind of winds up and you go to a water tower up there. And then we can just see these mountains. So I think this is Johnson Mountain in Springdale. This is just the top, here's another mountain. Who knows, is this the Watchman? I don't know. I can't see, there's a bunch of trees right there. So if you can see, I'm just lightly drawing um, the tops of these mountains. I can draw a teeny bit darker just so you can see it. I can tell on my camera it's a little bit too. And these aren't as round as I'm making them. So these are just like the background, all right? So just this is, would be way lighter. I'm just drawing it dark so you can see it. So hopefully that's helpful. So we have this first path. And I'm drawing the edges on it, but really what makes this path is just that we can see the color of the dirt right here. So you can see in the picture, we just see the dirt, we see the dirt, and then we see all of these bushes and things like that. If I was going to block in some of the things that I see in this landscape, I would block in this tree, just an old cottonwood. Looks like it's probably had better days. This looks like it's probably in the winter time anyway when I took this. And I was hiking in the morning or in the evening, actually, when the sun was just going down and hitting these mountains. If you don't know how to draw trees very well and you're like, ah, how are you doing that so fast? I always just think of Y's. Look, it's just like a Y and a Y and a Y. <laughs> and there's even a branch that kind of comes off. And then we have these bushes. So these are just a bunch of, it looks like sagebrush or I'm sure these have like specific names, but I'm just kind of blocking in the shapes of all of these bushes. And then there's some trees in here that are dead, of course, because this must have, been, must have been like in the winter or in the spring when I drew this. All right, so we have these bushes. We have these objects that are kind of in front of us making this landscape work, um, but really what is going to make this work in the end is going to be the probably color, I would think. <laughs> but this is anyway just a quick sketch of how I would render that landscape. All right, so that's that curved path is coming in. And there you have it. There are definitely some clouds up in the sky as well. And I would use this kind of drawing as a reference for like a later painting or picture, something like that. Let's do one more really quick. And let's see, this isn't really in the woods, so that one doesn't really work. This one is though. Let's just, let's do this one really quick since I have some time. So while I'm drawing, why don't you just try to draw with me? So these are, um, this is just a place in Alpine where there's poppy flowers that grow. People, I think, have taken some of them, so that's not good. All right, so I'm just gonna draw this path, all right? And there is a lot going on in this picture, probably even more 
than the one I took outside of Zion, but that's okay. So the horizon line is the eye level. It's about right here. And our pathway comes down below it because it's kind of going to be curving up into this landscape. So we can see part of it here and it's curving around and then it's coming back down. Actually more in this side right here. And then we can just see this side of it and it's getting bigger and opening up. And then it's like this because we're kind of on it. I almost think of this as being like, like a river. So it kind of would be the same thing, but it's just like a meandering path that goes through these trees right by this old pioneer house. And then we have lots more trees and things going on back here. And then there are some mountains in the background. So to, to just quickly show you, I mean, that's how you would draw the path. But if you want to block in some of the trees, I know sometimes when you get outside, it can be a little bit overwhelming because there's so much going on. There's so much information that your eyes can see. Um, so what I would do in this instance is we just have a bunch of these tall trees. So I would just choose a few of them to really look at the shape, try to figure out what's going on. I mean, these aren't oak trees. They're in the middle of some oak trees, but I actually don't know what kind of, these are different than the other trees that are around. And then I'm just drawing like some lines coming up. So this is the, where my picture plane ends right here. So I'm just drawing some of these tree trunks that I can see, just a few of them. And then in the distance, like right, there's a bunch of poppies here, but then we can see there are, there's like a clump of trees right here. And then even further back right here. So I'm just kind of focusing on the tree trunks right now. There's some little ones right in here. And then there's just a bunch of weeds really in here. So I'm just, totally scribbling. In the foreground, we can see them a little bit more. In the background, they kind of disappear. And then I would just, I'm just indicating with these curly lines that there's like some foliage up here. This is what I would do if I was like out drawing. I just quickly try to capture some of these details and then I would probably take this drawing home and work on it a little bit more. And I would indicate, since these poppies are such a big part of it, I'd probably just indicate, looks like somebody picked one up and dropped it on the trail. I would just kind of indicate where those bursts of red are, since that's kind of important to me in this drawing. Okay, and then I might even add a little bit of shading. So that's one way to draw a meandering path. Um, let's do one more really quick for you. So this is a hill, and this was in China when I was there. And so this is definitely going up, but let's, you know what? Let's draw this landscape and say there's like, this goes kind of up and over that hill, or up like that. What would you do then? Let's just kind of draw it like this, <laughs> so you can kind of see it. This one I'm not going to put a picture in. So if you're looking at a landscape and you have Here's this road. The horizon line is about right here. Smaller and then it just opens wide up at the bottom. Okay, so this is this road and there's some bushes here. It's like a bunch of sagebrush. And then there's a hill right here. And then there's a big hill right here. And then some cool like red rock formations over there. All right. So let me, hopefully, I, I need to probably sketch a little bit darker so you can see. This is just this hill. It's covered in probably cedar trees. And let's say we want to make a path that's going up this hill. Well, really, in order to make the path look realistic, you just need to know what's happening. Like, is this steep? Is it rolling? You know, is it soft? If it's steep, I mean, you could have a trail going straight up that mountain, right? You really could. Right? There, there could be a trail going there. There could be a trail coming off to the left and it's going to get smaller as it's going away from us. Really what's going to make it look right though is that it's following the curves of the land. So let's maybe make a trail that's coming up this hill and then going straight up the top. So here's the path. 
And this is so far away that it would be really hard to actually see this path, but let's say you're doing like an illustration and you just want to draw some paths going places. You could have this path going there and maybe it comes back around the corner and circles up to the top of this hill. <laughs> Who knows? You know, and maybe there's like a path that connects. I don't know. I'm kind of just drawing lines, but paths really just kind of depend on the landscape that you're, you're in. Like if I look outside right now, I can see there's, there's like they're building something. So there's like a path right here, but then there's all these little like deer trails that kind of come up from it. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. This one's <laughs> not as quite realistic, but hopefully it's still helpful to kind of see how I would handle something like that if, if you're outside drawing. So thank you so much for drawing with me today. Lucky hiker, I hope this is what you were looking for. Now what I would do is try to find a picture that you've taken of a trail or a path and try to draw it in perspective, but basically by using the ideas of, I call this, I guess it's not as much linear perspective as just space and aerial perspective. Things get smaller as they get further away from us, basically is the, that's basically the key with doing this. And also like the colors would be more muted back here. But if you're just sketching, remember that first one that we did. Just try to identify like where your horizon line is, um, where things are in relationship to each other, like where the curves are in the path, and then really how big it is compared to what's in front of you. So um, yeah, thank you so much for drawing with me. I hope that was helpful for you. And lucky hiker, I hope that's what you were looking for um, with the path in perspective. I, what's super helpful for me is if you would just take a picture and then show me. But I know it is hard when you're outside and you wanna draw something when you have a lot of information, but like I talked about in the video, try to like focus in on one part of that. Like um, people use viewfinders, try to just end it somewhere so you can use lines and angles to help you get things in the right proportion. But anyway, thank you so much. Uh, good luck drawing and I think the homework assignment for this was to go out or find a, no, don't go out unless you live where no people are around. Um, you can either find a picture of something or uh, if you can go outside, that would be great um, and draw a path in a landscape. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for joining me or you can just like zoom in on the one that I drew today and try to draw it again and kind of refine it. So thank you so much again for joining me on Mr. Otter Studio. Tomorrow we are going to be talking about uh, the figure. So we're done with perspective and we're moving into figure drawing. So I'm excited about that. Have a great day.